All right. Well, we'll uh, call the select board meeting to order. And uh, first on the agenda is public comment. This is for um, anything about the informational hearing, which is the topic tonight, that you don't feel like we've got on the agenda. Online. Right. Entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So this will be a public hearing and informational meeting about the um, police district budget, which is a should the ballots are out at this time. Um, do you want to walk folks through it, Trevor? Sure. Just some basics to. Yeah, just the basics. Start maybe with why we're here. With the defeat of the budget presented to voters in March, statute envisions that we will come back with a revised budget. There's a process set up for that. What's before voters on the 16th, which is the actual day that of the special election, is a revised FY24 police district budget. That's for July 1, 2023 through June 30, 2024. This hearing is part of that statutory process. Um, all of this information is available in different spots, mostly online, all in one piece right on a sidebar on the home page. The proposed revised budget is 524-102. This is a decrease of about $247,000 from the one proposed in March. We primarily get there through the reduction in number of full-time officers and switching over to some part-time capacity, about 1,100 hours worth, so a little less or a little more than half of a year for a full-time position. We are um, seeking some COPS grant funding to offset some of the costs for the third full-time officer. Um, most of the cuts came in the personnel piece. Police budgets, much like our other municipal budgets, are heavily weighted toward personnel costs, the way we provide services with the people to do it. And sometimes we buy expensive things like dump trucks and cop cars and whatnot. Um, this would raise from taxes, that's the amount that goes into the tax rate calculation, it's roughly the same number as the current fiscal year, I think it's a little bit less, um, 324, 294, that's from everybody inside the police district. We do have some non-tax revenue, I'd mentioned the COPS grant is probably the big source of that. That also includes any sort of, um, any fine or ordinance enforcement revenue, some of those things that we may charge and get smaller dollar amounts for, um, for other services we provide. The $100,000 transfer from the general fund is in there as well. That's for that essentially payment for service. If you remember, we renamed it from March until now to better reflect that it's going to be more of a contractual arrangement um, than sort of a, or, or a, a services agreement than it is sort of a straight kind of everywhere service payment. Um, so what we're actually projecting, and keep in mind this is an estimate based on grand list numbers that we have today using the one that we set for the tax rates last August, taking a three or four year historic growth rate, which is a little less than two tenths of 1%, trying to figure out if everything stays relatively the same. Where's the grain list end up? What does that mean from a tax rate perspective? So there's a slight decrease um, that could result in anywhere from say $6 and change to $13 and change for people with properties between $200,000 and $400,000 of value. It is not the same level of service that we had under the contract from a, a number of hours and number of officers. It's not the same level of service that we had when we had a Randolph Police Department. It is a starting place. It will be less than that. We've tried to estimate that, but until we are at a spot where we have a budget, we have a known number, we have a known sort of staff, um, it's a little hard to pin down exactly. We've estimated 80 to 100 hours. 100 hours is kind of the coverage window each week. Some of that's because you might have two people on and overlapping. You might have one person on at different points. There'll be shifts that maybe aren't covered at all, particularly in the um, early morning hours, for example. Um, like I said, all of the details up on the website. You can see a budget summary, a budget memo, a property tax table, the entire revised budget. There are four versions of frequently asked questions up there. We just updated the, the most recent one to reflect that ballots were mailed. It said ballots will be mailed. Ballots were mailed to all registered voters inside the police district. That was done as a way to try to increase turnout. We had about 22, 23% um, last time. So if we can inch that number up, it means that more people were able to participate and that's always a good thing. Uh, I think those are the basics. 
In the summary, we are up and running now with two officers and an administrative assistant. We're using the money unspent from the contract with the Sheriff's Department to fund those operations, and the board set aside some ARPA funds to outfit a police department, and so those have gone into acquiring vehicles, equipment, and that type of stuff. One of the topics that's come up is the $100,000 that's in the general fund budget. There seems to be a fair amount of confusion about that and how it's accessed and whatnot. Those funds are there the same as we had money in there for the Orange County Sheriff under contract to provide services to cover outside of the, of the district. Those will be in this, used in the same manner, but it'll be the, the police district will be contracting with the rest of the town to provide those services outside the town. So I've seen where some folks said, well, there's already $100,000 to fund the police district if this fails. That's not true. There has to be a police department to contract with in order for those services to be able to be provided. So that's just one, one item to, to make sure it's clarified out there. <coughs> All right, so at this time, the, the comments um, are, or questions about the police department budget that's out there to be voted on. And so we'll let folks um, ask the question. If it's just a comment, if you can just, if the comment's already been made, let it stand. Um, you know, six people saying the same comment, it's still the same comment. But not that it's any less important, but. Um, there's quite a few people online as well as in person, so we'll start here in the room. If people have any. If I may ask if it's appropriate uh, for people speaking either in the room or online to identify themselves and whether they live within or outside the police district, if that's appropriate. I don't know if you can make that request. Um, it can. It should just be people in the district. So it people should asking just questions be questions okay. about what they're voting on is what the hearing is. All right. Just wanted to clarify that point. The future. I mean, we can have the conversation at the end if there's time about next steps. Mm -hmm. But this is a hearing specifically for what's being voted on. Thanks for that okay. clarification. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so do we have anybody here in the room that has a question? That just could be easy. I have a question. Yes. 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 Identify yourself. I'm Harvey Porter. I'm in the district. Um, my question is, if the district kind of gets reestablished now, by what mechanism do you foresee the district expanding? Uh, in the past, it was always a, a vote of the people outside the district to join. Is that how it would, you likely would see it, or is the plan to <coughs> next year come back and do a townwide district and vote as a town on that police budget? So that's not a question about the budget that people are voting on, but we'll take that topic up after we get through people's questions on what the ballot issue is. In fairness, is there anybody online that has a question about the ballot item? I have a question. Hang on just a second. I'm not seeing any. Great. I'm Kristen Chandler. Uh, I'm a town resident. Um, is it my understanding that if this budget gets voted down, then we will not have any police coverage in the town? If this budget gets voted down, there will be no money to pay police officers come July 1. So I, I guess rather than say no police coverage, we'd have to rely uh, pretty much solely on state police. Correct. Thank you. Amanda Porter, I live within the district. Um, could you please go over again, if this is voted down, what will happen to the assets and what will happen, uh, not only will we lose the police officers, but how will how the town will have to go about reapplying uh, so that we could at some point have a police department. I don't know that we've sorted out yet what the steps will be if this gets voted down, so I don't know that I have an answer for you. It doesn't just automatically terminate the police department, if that's what you're thinking. We don't just go into non-existent. I think we've got to sort out what that would be. 
we do not have enough time if this gets voted down to develop another budget and put it out to vote and have another vote by July 1. So there will be no op there will be no funding to operate come July 1. Does that mean what does that mean? I'm really not sure. We actually just had a conversation earlier this afternoon about is there another option? Can, is there some type of action the board could take to do anything? And I'm not sure the answer on that. We're still researching it. But at this point, I would say that all the assets are there. The department is still there. We probably would not have any staff. Because I, for one, wouldn't stay somewhere where there was no money to pay me come July 1. Marty? I'm Marty Strange. I live in the district. Um, the um, the hundred thousand dollars was voted in the general fund the town meeting. Correct. Will become available on July first. Correct. And it's earmarked to be designated for use by the police district. Incorrect. Well, that's what it said on the in the ballot um, on the, on the at services. the annual meeting. That's what that's what people voted on, and that's what the frequently asked questions said. What they base their votes on. I believe it says that it's for police services. It's, so the the town has for years had a line item in the general fund budget for contracted line, police service, and that's what that line item is. But that line item was for contract with the Orange County Sheriff's Department. It's quite a different thing to say you're going to contract with yourself. And well, we're not. We're contracting with a special district within the town. Okay. And yep. So by doing that, by doing that, what you're saying is that we're now going to use police officers from the police district to provide police services outside of the police district. And the terms of the merger agreement said the police district can only exist to the extent that services are not common to the rest of the town. The police district services are not common to the rest of the town, but now they are, if you're going to use them to provide service outside the district. And so it gets to be a question of how's that $100,000 going to be tracked? Are we going to know how much of that money is spent outside the district by the police district, and how much is spent inside the district by the police district? Because in the frequently asked questions, and I don't know, by the way, the status of that, does the board vote? on re releasing the frequently asked questions. Is that, is that a document that the board can, can the voters rely on what's in those documents as the word of the board? Wow. Those are questions that are posed to us at other select meetings, and they're taken down with notes, um, okay. and then they're re-input into the system as patrons have asked them to meet members. It would be nice to know what the answer is before the time we have to vote. Of course, a lot of people have already voted. But, it, it seems to me that, that what you've done here in a kind of a, a left-handed way is you've created a town-wide police district. <coughs> By hiring the police district to provide police services that were not previously available out, or were not supposed to be available outside of the police district. They now are. And I think that means that de facto you've executed Chapter 1, Section 5 of the merger which says that if the town decides to go town-wide, town the police department, it must all be paid for from the general fund. And I think that's where we are. I'm not sure we completely agree, but I, bet we I understand you. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have some other questions here. I don't want to monopolize, but I hope that you'll come back to me if others have other questions. Well, nobody else has their hand up, so what's question number two? Hang on. It'll be question number three. <laughs> Go ahead. No, hang on. Can Marty, I please ask that if when people are talking, could they try to talk loudly? Because people are behind us and some in front of us and some of us are getting old. <laughs> I'll be happy to be. Most people complain about being too loud. Thank you. Um, it, it seems to be, it needs to be, if this $100,000 is going to be available both inside and outside the district, and, and it seems to me that it is by the language it's in the frequently asked uh, questions. Are you thinking of the budget summary memo, Marty? Because looking at the most recent version of the FAQs, the only allusion reference to the general fund payment for services in the table. Yeah, but the 
general fund services were approved at town meeting. Right, I'm just trying so to cite the right binding, document and follow along. That's on the use of the general fund money. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm just trying to provide the right citation here, that's all. Well, I think I have the right citation. Where are you finding it in the FAQs? Is what is, what the question I'm looking is. at version one from 5 5 2023. Are we looking at no, different that's, versions? That's for the current, that's for the budget that's before us now. But the budget that was before the public when we voted on the, at town meeting to put the hundred thousand dollars into play mm -hmm. that's a different budget, and it's that frequently asked uh, questions memo that I'm talking about. So, so you want to where it says not only, not only is that money going to be available mm -hmm. for use in the police district, but the voters can count on it to be not a one-time use, but a continuous supplement. As an agreement for services. But and so we're comparing a transfer that, for that, a budget that, that was that defeated to a new one that's revised. That agreement for services, Trevor, came later when it was convenient for you guys to talk about it then. But it was not what was on the ballot in, in March. So Marty, not to argue, but we've been pretty adamant that that had to be a contract for services. That came up very early in the budget development. Process. I'm not saying it doesn't have to be a contract. I'm saying that whether it's a contract or not, you're creating a de facto townwide police service. Well, we could actually take that money and go contract with the sheriff's department again. Yes, you could. county or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. The challenge with that is then it financially will impact the viability of the police district. Right. But, but, my, but the question, my second question that I'm trying to get to, and I haven't been able to, is um, if we're going to spend some of that money outside the police district, but not all of it. It's all for outside of the police district. $100,000 okay. is for well, services Okay, well then what that, what that means then the is that taxpayers in the police district are paying for police services outside the police district. And I think that violates the merger agreement. Okay. We can look at that. Um, question in the back. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, Tom Malinchuk. Just have a question. Could you clarify just what are the boundaries of the police district? And are the people who are outside of the police district paying taxes on this budget and what we're talking about? The vote that's coming, that's underway right now with the mail ballots are those taxes are only for the people inside the police district. What is the police district? I live in Randolph Center. You're not a... Well, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> that's what I wanted to know. I think it's Fish Hill, right? It goes to... Yeah. Roughly. It's the old village boundaries. Where's Scott? Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah. Uh, he could probably describe what he has to drive. So if you're headed down of town on 66, right where that uh, bridge is, as you're heading out of town, uh, where the speed limit changes from 25 to 35, that would be a boundary. Uh, if you're headed out past uh, Gifford, uh, towards Shaw's, where the speed limit changes from 25 to 35, 40, that's the village line. Okay. okay, so the second part of my question was, are people outside of the district paying taxes on, on this uh, budget? Not on the one that's being voted down, but the hundred thousand that's in for services outside of the limits of the village, they are. They are. And that was voted yeah. in March. They already did. Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Hi, Andrew Terry. I'm in the village as well. Can I just clarify? If was that hundred thousand dollars spent in previous years? Like I think you're only talking about, like if somebody in Randolph Center or mm -hmm. or outside of the village in Randolph calls the police, then. Essentially, the village would send a bill to the town for that call. Is that is that what you mean, or is it just a blanket hundred thousand dollars? Yep, special? it'll be on a, a per, some level of service per call prior basis. to get it. And so, if you look in the past, contract with Orange County Sheriff was twenty five thousand. But like Braintree does this as well, and Brookfield, they all pay on a per, per call basis for whoever shows up. Is that right? I don't think Brookfield. Well, Brookfield no. has a con had a contract they with had a contract. County Sheriff. I don't know that Braintree has ever had one. Okay. What we learned when we were looking at the service calls is there is a fair number of calls that Orange County Sheriff went to that were outside of the district, mm -hmm. and the district was paying for them. Mm -hmm. Or they were part of Orange County sh services they provide countywide. Mm -hmm. And so... When we looked at what how to set that number, it only seemed fair that it be set higher because the the people in the district shouldn't be absorbing the cost for so, the calls that are. So that's a reflection of the increased need for services outside of the district. It's not an increase in need. 
it's okay. accurately reflecting how they're going to be paid for now because okay. Orange County Sheriff isn't part of the mix. Okay. Orange County Sheriff absorbed a lot of that in their budget, okay. and they're not doing it anymore. Yep. So those calls are still coming in, and somebody's got to pay for them. Sure. Yep. So if they're not in that allocation of funding, mm -hmm. then they're coming out of the district's money. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. That makes sense. Uh, I'd just like to point out, um, notwithstanding what a 40-year-old uh, plus merger agreement says, this method of funding police services in, in municipalities with a village and town component is very consistent with what goes on in other village and town municipalities around the state. One example that I've just discovered recently because I'm involved in writing about the search for a new police chief in Woodstock is Woodstock, where the village trustees hire and manage the police department, the police chief and the police department, and the town pays for police services on a per call basis. So it's... it's Tom, I beg your pardon, that's not a merged village and town. Right, that's definitely... We are a, ver we are a merged right, village right, and town. Right, right, right. Well, it makes a difference. <laughs> well, it, it it makes a difference, but um, it, it, it kind of gets down to splitting hairs a bit when we're talking about having adequate police services for the town while we make that transition. And it's not a transition you can wave a magic wand over and make happen overnight. That's why we're here. Believe me, I've had all my hair split. <laughs> <laughs> um, under the um, frequently asked questions, it's, it's estimated that with this budget, we could provide no more than 80 to 100 hours of coverage per week. Is that, have I got that right? Mm -hmm. And um, under the OSC, uh, Orange County Sheriff's Department budget, they were supposed to provide 120 hours in the district. But the 80 to 100 hours that's in this budget is not all in the district because 100,000 of that is being used, and as you just told me, all of that is going to be used to provide service outside the district. So what's left to provide service of this $539,000 budget, what's left to provide service inside the village is more like 65 or 70 hours per week. Do I have that, is my math right on that, Trevor? I don't know what you're doing for math right now, Marty. <laughs> well, I'm trying to point out that $100,000 of the $539,000 mm -hmm. is the general fund money that can only be spent outside of the police district. So if you can only provide 180 to 100 hours a week, then not all of it can be in the police district because 18% of it has got to be outside the police district. Well, our, our agreement with Orange County Sheriff's was 120 for all the town and village. It wasn't no. just the district. 120 was only for the town. I read all those contracts. Just for the six district. of them. Okay. Three of them for the village okay. and three of them for the town. So I think it's, it's hard to say that it's exactly that, but you're probably getting close. Okay. And here's why. An officer doesn't spend all their payroll hours patrolling in a town. Absolutely. No matter where it is, right? They have training requirements, they sure. have leave, they have, uh, they might get involved in a situation that requires a whole lot of paperwork, documenting, being in court, you know, transporting people. There's a whole variety of services they provide. So can we tell you that exactly X number of hours will be in the village and exactly X number of hours will be outside? No, but you're probably in that realm. I'm not, I'm not asking you to tell me exactly. I'm asking you to agree with me. It's going to be less. It's probably not going to happen. The allocation of hours in the budget will pay will not be within the police district. Is it accurate? It can't be at 80 to 100 because the budget has got 80% of the budget has got to be spent outside. Hang on, I have another question on this line of discussion. Go ahead. So, the, I'm Gus Meyer, I live within the uh, police district. Um, so, there's, the actual budget is not 500 and something thousand, it's 600 and something thousand for the police force. No. 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 It's 524-102. What's that? 524-102 is the total. There's 100 that comes from the general fund as that service agreement to pay a portion of that 524-102. And you take non-tax revenue off that, so the amount to be raised by taxes in the districts, the 324, okay, or thereabouts. So the when you estimated 80 to 100 hours of police time, that was the total. Correct. 
We were right. trying to. So it includes the services. So Marty's right that it includes the services outside the district. So the services within the district will be um, less than than 80 hours. The budget isn't for only within the police district. That's correct. Okay. Can I? Sure. Oh wait, hang on. In the back. Um, Genevieve Byrne, I live within the district. I didn't understand something that I think you said earlier, which was that if we spent that hundred thousand dollars, like if we, on a, on the contract with the sheriff's department, for instance, it would affect the viability of the police district or something? Is that, am I getting that right? And I didn't understand what you meant by that. The budget that's built is to provide a level of service and to cover the expenses of the police district with that model. If you take $100,000 out of it, you can't have that same model. You now got a, you may have one less officer, which then impacts your ability to provide service because you don't have the staff to cover shifts or to provide backup or do different functions. Can I just uh, ask one more question? Um, I may have been able to get this information by looking at the FAQ, but how different is the proposed budget from what we're currently paying for two officers and an administrative assistant? How much does it expand beyond what we're using right now? It would add another full-time officer slot paid for in large part through a federal cops grant if we're lucky to get it. And then there's 1,100 hours of part-time capacity to try to build out that coverage model. So those would be the two additions to what we're currently carrying. And what's the cost currently? The uh, it's probably going to be in the 135 to 140 range is what we're thinking based on the unspent amount from the contract. But I haven't looked at a budget status report. Per year. And remember, that's not annual. That's what money was oh, available okay. to get through the rest of this business. That's essentially a February to June 30 okay. kind of amount. Kristen, do you have a question? I did. Well, I, I don't know if it's a comment or a question, but I, I'm wondering if people are aware that if we didn't have a police department here, we would be the only town in all of Vermont that has a hospital and a mental health agency that wouldn't have a police department. And I'm also wondering if the voters are aware that the Bethel Barracks, if we're going to need to rely on the state police, um, because they're the only barracks in the whole state that does not have an embedded mental health worker. While there's funding for that, they haven't been able to hire anybody and, and retain anybody there. Every other barracks in the state has an embedded mental health worker who can respond um, to mental health calls. And I just, that, that's a real concern for me if we don't have that capacity here. If we have to rely on, you know, and hopefully at some point they will be able to find the right, the right person for that position at the barracks, but um, it's a real concern for me as a citizen to have a, 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 a hospital and a mental health agency and a, a state police barracks that doesn't have the, any, the resources that every other town in Vermont does have. Do you have more questions? Um, the, um, I got it. Okay. Uh, nobody wants to go to the police department. Okay. Yeah, I'm not actually sure. Well, um, well, well, there are some. I don't know about that. There are some. I'm not going to comment on that. I'm not among those. I think there is time to rewrite a sensible budget that provides more adequate protection for the police, for the, for the village. I know it's going to take some clever work, but you've proven to be very clever already. And I'm sure you can be even more clever. Um, there's ARPA money that can be used. There's the general fund money that's going to become available January 1st or July 1st that can be used. There's creativity. If we can take the time to do this right and come up with a police budget that is more adequate than what we have before us now. If this budget passes as it is, those of you who hope that we will someday have a townwide police department and this committee that's to be created subsequent to this vote um, and we'll have six months to discuss how to restructure policing in, in Randolph and that we could get a majority of the select board to put on the ballot for the next uh, 
town meeting, a town wide department, why in the world would anybody, if this budget passes, why in the world would anybody who lives outside of the police district vote to pass that budget? They wouldn't. They have no reason to, because they got $10,000 that's going to be put in the bank every year for them to draw on for all the police protection that they need. And if they vote in a town wide department, they're going to have to pay general through the general fund for all the police service, and they're not going to do it. So it's poppycock to think we're going to be able to have a skinny police department for six months or eight months and then come away with a town-wide department. It's not going to happen. We need to take care of the village now. We need to take care of it with an adequate budget, and we don't have it here. Trevor, I mean, yeah. Trevor, can you go over what happens on January 1st if we switch and use the general fund money to July, July, 1st. July 1st? Oh, yes, July 1st. We can. Great. Right. Can you answer what happens if we went and used general fund money to fund a police department by going townwide? Let's just hypothetically say tomorrow. What would happen? I mean, some of it is you don't have the funding, and if this budget goes down and you don't have the cops, then July 1, whether you have money or not, becomes kind of a moot point. Right. Um, and so we've set that up. And then it gets into, are there other options out there? How far, even if you could use the 100000 it's not going to go terribly far, especially if you're talking about covering an entire town. You've circumvented the process that we've already essentially committed to to involve the public to set up for a vote. That's before you get into any questions about debt, for example. Debt. Um, and that's where it can really get undemocratic and dicey. And that's why that hasn't. Right. Isn't that's really an option. It's meant for emergencies. Like right. something's exploded, something's flooded. Mm -hmm. So basically, if according to the letter that we got back from the attorney. Um, it's not prudent to just discontinue the police district right now because the, and implement a town-wide police force that expands all the way to the perimeters of Randolph right now. The best path for that to happen would be at the next town, actual town meeting so that a general fund police budget can be created. If we went and did that and voted out a police district, and correct me if I go off the rails here, and went townwide tomorrow to implement a budget that comes from the general fund this year, starting July 1, you can't do it right. without going into a deficit. And that's what Trevor is saying. Because yeah, all of that general fund money, some people said they didn't know what he just said. All of that general fund money is already allocated to the admin positions here at the town hall, the rec department, your highway funds, which we're trying to get your roads graded right now, um, all of those things. <coughs> so a police fund in the general budget would create a half a million dollar deficit, and then all of that would have to be recuperated next year. So you have a negative, we'll say half a million dollars, to stand up a proper police department, and then you have to make up for that next year. And we've seen that in other areas of the government with deficits. And so you'd be essentially paying double next year in your taxes. And nobody wants you, to go there. I don't know why you're addressing those comments to me because I'm not taking I'm any not, of those I'm positions. I'm looking at everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not but taking okay. any of those positions. So we just, we just heard Trevor say that the current leftover money from the Orange County Sheriff's Department is carrying our skeletal force right now Correct. for six months. $100,000 again July 1st in the general fund money can carry that skeletal force no, for a couple months. months. No, four months. Four months. Four months. It, and it's stretching in large part because for a while Scott was the only officer on. We were piggybacking on BSB's dispatch capabilities. Some of these things that we have now had to take on fully, pay for our own staffing. So that window that it's covered is probably smaller than that if we maintain the operating footprint we have. Um, and then if you were to throw in the wrinkle of increased mileage, our, uh, yeah. I mean, we're still, this goes back to the analogy from, I think, February, where it's like, if we're going to build a house, which is kind of what we're doing, we need a foundation first. We're spending a lot of time on, what are we going to put in the house? What type of appliances? What color should the paint be? The roof? All of these things, there's going to be time to get to, but if we don't build a solid foundation, 
we've got some really nice curtains hanging from a tree limb kind of a thing. Like we don't have anything to put them in. There's not a window. Is this a perfect model? It's the one that we moved to after the one that we tried that would have provided for a more expansive footprint was voted down. So we've downsized the house plan, but it still starts from that bottom and we build up from there. Um, I wanted to take a slightly different take on things than Marty has. Um, that as, as a person who uh, lives in the village, um, I would love to see a townwide police force. I think that a great deal of what happens with our police force is really a service to the entire town and not just the village. Um, I'm, you know, I've been paying for a village police force for 40 years and um, I'd love to share some of that load. I happen to think that um, what you have done, um, I think, is, is fairly inspired. That um, I don't know if it's legal, as Marty's alluding to, but if it can happen, the idea <coughs> may be the most palatable for the town as a whole is to indeed have a village police department and contracted services for the rest of the town. Um, because there are some differing needs. I don't expect that we want to, there's no way this town wants to afford uh, a police force that can do patrols throughout the entire geography of Randolph. So there are some different uh, elements to this and having some sort of means whereby the needs of the town at large are met as well as the needs of the village, which are somewhat more concentrated, I think is a great thing. I also think that there are all sorts of questions to be asked in terms of uh, where does the town really stand on this? Where does the voters stand on this? So the idea that you're having a committee uh, to study this over some period of time, I think also makes sense. Um, and, and that also will give time to find out whether or not you really can, under the current structure, actually contract out to the, um, to the services out to the town as a whole. Um, but I do think that um, given all of that, um, I, um, and, and what Trevor was, was talking about, um, I, I think if indeed we go with this budget, and, and the previous budget was defeated, so you've got to do something different, um, and probably less, so that's what you've done. And, um, and if it proves inadequate, um, you know, uh, people can petition and, and we can have another vote and we can increase the budget in the middle of the year, can't we? If that were to be our desire. I don't think you can. Well, I'm, I'm asking. No, you, uh, you end up going in the deficit and yeah. take it up in your next vote. You can't have a special allocation vote? We, we go again for yet another revised budget. In all the time doing this, close to two decades, I've never seen a process where a budget's defeated, goes to a no tax rate impact beginner's budget, and then goes north again. It's highly unusual. Statute says that we keep revising but it's almost never a peaks and valleys sets of revisions. Um, and the higher number we know for a variety of reasons wasn't the winner. So the town cannot, in my phrase of you, you vote on a new police station. You do that necessarily on the town meeting day. Is there no mechanism? So if we have this 100,000, will cover us for two months. In that two months, is it not possible to create a town-wide motion, whatever, uh, to say, okay, well, we're going to pass this amount of money for a police department? Is that not legally possible? Statute re-envisions that you go back to the voters with a defeated budget. There isn't a mechanism to revisit an approved budget except for the annual meeting the following year. Okay. So, so, but if the budget were voted down, then that could happen. The police district budget, and then it's a police district budget vote over and over until the there's a right number. Passed. What's that? The general fund budget yeah. already passed. Right. So we go back and visit that again in March. You can't add to the general fund budget by a set, special appropriation in some way. No. Once okay. it's passed, it's set until March. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
What, what Gus just said sounded like a pretty, correct me if I'm wrong, a ringing endorsement of exactly the way we're proposing to proceed. I, what, I don't know what, if I have a ringing endorsement <laughs> in this regard, but, but I, I do think that what you've come up with, um, it, it makes sense to me. I mean, I, I'm a very big fan of a, of a town life force. Mm -hmm. um, how you get there and what that looks like in the end, I don't know, because I'm also not wanting to have something where um, people are feeling like something was forced on them. So um, I, I, I think um, not only exactly where you get to, but how you get there are things that need to be sorted out. What we've heard is that people want to understand what the services are that that need to be provided. There's some disagreement in the types of service a town police force should be doing. There's a level of service question. There's it, it, you know there's a lot of, of of conversation taking place over who the right party is to provide what type of service. Um, and so I think all that has to be sorted out. And then it's you hear, you know, somebody on the clay white road saying, well, if they go by your house five times a day, they got to go by my house five times a day. So now you're up to your, exactly what you said, you know, they're not going to patrol clay white road five times a day, right? So it's the level of service. After you define what that service is, what's the level of service that that should be? And then what does that budget look like? And when we get done with the sticker shock, we may be going back to visit what the level of service is and what the services are and, and whatnot to get down to that. But you know, I think you're spot on when you say there's a whole conversation about the level of service in the police district currently versus the level of service in the rest of the town and, and what does that model then look like and, and how do you meet it. And it's also an opportunity, as, as you were saying, Trini, that, um, to, to look at what do we actually want from a police force. Mm -hmm. Because there's a gazillion different things that police do, mm -hmm. and I think it's a wonderful opportunity for the community as a whole to say, what kind of police force do we want to have? Mm -hmm. We haven't had that conversation all the time I've been here, so no. uh, that would be a great thing to kind of do it. Um, I think the other thing that's nice, if this does pass, we will actually have like very firm data, the way Scott has... Um, implemented it, the, the system, it's a little bit different, like the state police came before and said Randolph, but like that's not village versus town. And so the way the data is coming in now, we're really seeing like what calls are going where. And, um, and that will give us informed decision making, because then we have people who think nothing happens on, you know, on Hospital Hill, and there's been calls on Hospital Hills lately, like, you know, so like having that information of like what's really happening in our in the village and town is going to help us kind of understand what services we do need to. I think the the, the proposed police services committee pro provides an excellent opportunity for us to come together as a community and examine all these questions. You're absolutely right. Policing today uh, is a, uh, about a gazillion different things, as you said. And um, you know, this isn't Mayberry RFD and the Andy Griffith Show anymore. Um, policing in rural communities is very different from what it was when the town and village merged uh, 40 years ago. And we, we need to be thinking about the breadth of services that police can provide, not just crime convention, prevention, not just traffic patrols, but as Kristen suggested, uh, working with our youth and counseling mentor relationships, working on mental health issues, working against uh, domestic violence, which we have in our community, uh, working against animal cruelty. There's a whole wealth of things that, that make policing for the whole town uh, a desirable thing from my point of view. Uh, we're one community. We're not two separate entities uh, that should be warring at one another over this point. And that, that police services committee will give us an opportunity to look at all these complex questions and come before the community and come before the voters six months from now in a town meeting next year with a, with a proposal that hopefully most, um, the, the vast majority of Randolphians will, will support. considering also the liabilities 
if we don't pass a police budget and maybe a minor one for the town and for the citizens, there's a lot of liabilities out there. Can we afford to be sued and have to adjudicate all that stuff? I don't believe there's any liability on the town if we don't have a police district because a lot of towns don't have them. I think <coughs> if you have one and we don't respond correctly, then you get into a challenge. Uh, this is 2023. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can sue you for wearing an orange vest. I'll <laughs> 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 win, but I can try it. <laughs> I think Marty touched on this, and my viewpoint is slightly different than his, but along the same lines, is that if you start out with such a small budget, even if we just continue to talk about the district and not incorporating uh, police services for the entire town, other than the $100,000 that's been earmarked, you can't go from, or I don't foresee, the voters going from a Yugo style budget or a one bedroom apartment style budget for a 15 wow. member family to then building a McMansion. And that's my point is that you can't go from, from this skeleton crew to a realistically manned force you're not going to get there. It's going to have to go in baby steps because you've seen that people don't want to spend money even if it's not that much out of their own pocket. <clears throat> so that's my concern is going from the skeleton crew to hopefully a realistically funded police force. I, I don't see it happening. and. That's my only concern with voting yes on this particular budget, is that we've got such a huge way to go to get it to be a, a fully funded department, even if we're just that, talking about within the village. That presumes that the budget which failed in March failed because people felt, felt it was too high. And I don't believe it's accurate that that's why it didn't pass. It didn't pass because a significant amount of people in the village wanted to use a no vote as a leverage to force townwide policing on the entire community. Or they didn't understand. I agree with you yeah. that it might not have been about money. But, but instead of, of looking at that and why it happened, Instead, we dropped the budget. Well, we so, did hear from Kelly that all the people she talked to, it was the dollar value. Yeah. They didn't want their taxes well, to go up. Yeah. And so we heard that repeatedly. <clears throat> and well, when the town auditor says some, well, you know, she's our elected official. So when that person brings the spiel, you have to take that a little bit seriously. Yeah, well, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Right. Um, but that's I, just <laughs> saying, as the elected official, I agree. I agree with you entirely. But, um, yeah. uh, yeah. well, uh, well, also, also it's a defund the police have, mentality that's behind I have something else some, to say. So. Um, I have, but like, um, so, um, um, so as we move forward with ideas of what we're going to do, it doesn't mean that the, dis the district is going to be the only people paying for the police next year. So our grand list values are like, what, one third in village and two third out? Is so what's like our grand list values? Sorry, I got... That's okay. The orange vest caught my eye. <laughs> like a dog with a squirrel. Um, <laughs> I'm going to believe in that, Jim. So, I'm ready. so we, ha we have a lot more taxes coming in from just, like, so if we did expand the police district or whatever we decide to do, whatever the decision is for next year, you know, to take it step by step, but we aren't taxing, hopefully won't be taxing just the village next year. Hopefully we'll have some income coming in from the grand list from outside of the village, right? And I mean, so in theory. It all depends on the structure we end up with. So right. if you do an expanded police district and that's approved, then it becomes the grand list value inside those expanded boundaries. Right. And the example that's come up for historic and other reasons is it goes down and grabs, say, the Shaw's Plaza and goes up and grabs the barn and the park and ride. Those are common areas of calls. 
Yeah. So any of that value that goes in those expanded boundaries becomes part of that dollar figure that the uh, tax rates are calculated on. If you went townwide, it would just be across the entire grand list. Right. So with each model, who pays and what that value is changes. Right. So if you imagine like every house has equal value and everyone's paying three hundred dollars a year towards the budget, and you have a hundred houses paying that versus having five hundred houses pay for that, or what? I mean, that's just I'm throwing out numbers. <clears throat> but so it's not necessarily that like we're going to stick with this budget and skeleton crew and then everyone's going to pay $2 million next year. It's like, you know, like there's going to be something in the middle and it's not going to, hopefully, we'll see what happens. And that's the thing is like we need to get to the next step to see what we can do for that. Your budget will go up too, though, as you cover. Right, yeah, right. true, true, true. There's, yeah, it's, yeah. I guess but, economies of scale. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but economies of scale. So if you're only taxing a portion of the, of the grand list versus you know, whatever it comes out of it. So it's not just a straight dry, like, everyone in the village is going to pay $300 this year, next year they're going to pay $100,000, you know, whatever, so. And I, I get that. I, I understand that. But, like you said, it's one step at a time, right? And right now, we're still talking about just the village. Mm -hmm. So before we can even get to uh, spreading the wealth, so to speak, right? For, we need a service here. Right. That's what this is about. And in this order to about. provide services that are adequate to the town, it's got to be a lot more than the 80 hours less whatever we're spending outside the district. Mm -hmm. Right? So my concern is that you can't go from here to here in one year. It's going to take multiple years if Kelly was correct that it was about money, which I think for some people it is. Some people think that we don't need police here, that mm -hmm. social workers are the answer to most of what goes on here. I don't agree with that, but again, I don't think you're going to find the voters, whether it's a townwide or whether it remains in the district, I don't think you're going to take a small budget and then make it a realistic budget. You've got too much of a gap to fill. That's my concern, is that now we've got an even further gap than we did in October. It will be even worse if we have no budget this year and then we jump to a budget next year. So. And I do agree with you on some level. Is it insufficient? Absolutely. It, it also might not be. We don't know, and that's what this committee is about. You know, there. this is for providing a base level of services based off of a budget that was requested at the, wow, that was March, three days, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> at the select board meeting. And I don't want to say the word hopefully, but based off of the level of services that are provided until June 30th of next year, if it gets approved, then maybe the community will see, based off of the communication and the transparency, that yes, in fact, we do need more of a budget because we didn't get to have 4th of July because there was no police uh, allowing us to close the street. Or we can't have Halloween because there was no police to close the street. Or we don't have protection for our school because somebody was at the hospital and we only have one and a half police officers on duty so I don't want to call those what they are but there are levels of services that are expected and that are needed and the only way that we can get there is by having some baseline level to collect data from and then proceed from there if we vote this down there's no data everybody's ghosting each other it might turn into Randolph Gotham City, we don't know, because there'll be no police there locally to account for those those data points. And you can't count, in my humble opinion, on the outside forces stepping up to cover oh. an emergency here. They've made it clear that they do not have the, the person power to right. To make that happen at the Royalton Barracks. They've been very clear about that. And, and that's important, in my humble opinion, for people to know. And I think that there are people 
that buried have buried their heads in the sand on that. Oh, you probably want to know who I am. I'm Mary McMillan, and I do live in the district. <laughs> Some people know me already, so, you know. Knit one, pearl two. <laughs> We have heard that um, the challenge of having one officer on covering the town, now imagine what it's like to be in the state police position and have to cover multiple towns with how many on at a time? Three. We cover 20 towns. Oh Three officers at a Three. time covering 20 towns. Wow. So they have one serious accident in their it's state. Just crazy and when something <laughs> like, sorry VSP, but after the accident that happened yesterday, those guys... They're, they had to focus there. Anything else that was going on just had to go by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And without, a, without individuals here, you've got an issue because on the rare chance that something does happen, you're basically out of luck. You are just, there you go. And that's really scary. I'm sorry, there are an awful lot of seniors in this community, and if something happened, they would be lost. And that, I lost both mentally and physically if they didn't have anybody to turn to. It, it, when I think of the people at the Red Lion or the people, well, even when I was pastoring the Red Brick Church, it was a senior congregation. If something happened to somebody there, you know, um, if I wasn't a person they could talk to, they, there were big troubles. If there isn't a police force to be able to step up locally to support the people in the community, it's just a tough game you're going to play. I'm originally from New York State, have friends that are cops, and man, these guys have tough lives. Questions? Sorry, I got so No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Not seeing Tell any. Trina, can I ask you a simple question? Yeah. Yeah. Tim Caliber from the Herald, also in the police district. Um, the what Herald the and residents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what are the statutory obligations for warning and having another vote? So if it does go down, when is the soonest that another vote could theoretically happen? Well, this Not, was the quickest we could get it from the March. Yeah, it, yeah. You, you can't do it again until March, can you, to an annual meeting? It, if there was a police district budget, if this one is voted down, then you're into the statutory cycle, which is not less than 30 nor more than 40, but it presumes that we have a number from which to jump off of, so you've got to add <coughs> some time to that. So planning time plus 30 to 40 days. <coughs> yep. Which brings you into mid-July? Yep. Yeah, I would say conservatively, yeah. Without police, because they'd be um, gone. As fast as you put together this budget, that was impressive. <laughs> mm -hmm. but we're scrambling for our lives, so <laughs> we, t we try to move fast. I'm wondering how this study committee is being put together, like who's on the study committee, or what, how is that being decided? Yeah. There was a, there's a call out right now for people to send in letters so, of, of interest, three, and then the select board will sit down and go through them all and decide who's on. The, the, the um, resolution, the motion we passed um, in the wake of the March vote um, setting up the committee is it's going to be comprised of two members of the select board, one from within the police district and one living outside the police district, three residents of the, of the village, um, three residents of the town, and one a person who is a business owner in the village who may or may not reside in Randall. Uh, and a business owner outside the police district that may or may not reside within. I thought it was a business owner within the police yeah, district outside. who may or may not. Outside, that's the big. Well, there's two issues. It's the business and the person. Does either one of them have to be in the police district? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. I think the answer was no. 
Not the way it's written. There's guys that I'm looking at here. I'm not playing Tetris or anything. <laughs> question. You said there's a call out now. What does that mean? Um, people that are interested should be submitting their letters of interest and was there to the select board to, to be on the committee. Oh, all right. Okay. We also we also stipulated in in the uh, in, in the motion to create the, the police services committee that we would encourage uh, people with police experience, mental health counseling experience, youth youth services experience, or financial expertise also to apply, so that we can bring people to the table who. Um, who have expertise in those areas that really um, can contribute to what our policing is going to look like in the future. The general call and the scope of work and all of that's on the town website. It's in the same section as all of the other police information. I think right now it's the second one down underneath the special public meeting, what we're doing right now, warning, in summary, whatever we're doing, wherever we are. <laughs> I was just texted and and asked if the chat uh, questions were going to be responded to. My answer was yes. Once you're done here, was my thought. So I'm bringing just it up. They're supposed to raise their hands. They need to raise their hands. They need to raise their hand to talk. Yeah. Well, now, they, now they've just heard you. Raise your hands. We asked if there was any comments from on there, and we didn't get any. The only one I see come up was whether there was going to be any federal funds or grants, and you answered that with a COPS grant. Yep, the, the COPS grant. I didn't see any counts come up. I thought I saw a note about reappraisal, which will at some point play an impact. With the reappraisal, some homes will be taxed. Well, we got that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's. Only if they're separate. Are there any grant opportunities to invest in policing? Yeah. So, we'll just go through them. We've talked about the COPS grant. There are. We are planning to use one. That's part of the plan. If you keep scrolling, we'll go through them fast, maybe. Um, there was one about reappraisal. It won't generate more tax revenue, it generates more value. So, in a standard model if the grand list value goes up the tax rate will go down but the amount to be raised by taxes stays the same um how will policing calls inside and outside the district be calculated we'll probably use a tracking me mechanism similar to what they've used in you know we'll look at woodstocks orange county sheriff all of those to try to make sure that we're calculating where they go and when they go there plus there's a data point i think when they fill out the reporting on the Scott's gone. The neighbors reporting, or whatever it's called. Come on. Yeah, Scott's back, but yeah. yeah. Oh. Hey, hey, Scott. All right. Do we have any other questions? Very nice. I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. I hear that. Oh, I second. Oh, <laughs> Aye. Aye.